In this video, we are going to talk about the different hypotheses and theories explaining the origin of the universe. And here are our specific learning outcomes. The universe is at least 13.8 billion of years old. Now let's talk about its features. Let's start with its structure, composition, and age. The universe as we currently know it comprises all space and time and all matter and energy in it. It is made of 4.6 baryonic matter. When we say baryonic matter, it is the ordinary matter consisting of protons, electrons, and neutrons, as well as atoms, planets, stars, galaxies, nebulae, and other bodies. It is also made of 24% cold matter. When we say cold matter, it is the matter that has gravity but does not emit light. And the remaining 71.4% is dark energy matter. So this is the source of anti-gravity. It is a force that counteracts gravity and causes the universe to expand. Now the dark energy or the dark matter can explain what may be holding galaxies together. Oh my god, daddy, hello. Now hydrogen, helium, and lithium are the three most abundant elements. And hydrogen and helium are the most abundant elements in the universe. Having the lowest mass, these are the first elements to be formed in the Big Bang model of the origin of the universe. Now the stars, which are the building blocks of galaxies, are born out of clouds and gas and dust in galaxies. Instabilities within the clouds eventually results into gravitational collapse, rotation, heating up, and transformation into a protostar. Okay? When we say protostar, this is the hot core of a future star as thermonuclear reaction sets in. So this is basically an early stage in the formation of a star resulting from the gravitational collapse of gases. Now, a star's energy comes from combining light elements into heavier elements by fusion, or what we call nuclear burning. This is also called as nucleosynthesis. In small stars like the Sun, hydrogen burning is the fusion of four hydrogen nuclei into a helium nucleus. Now you have to remember that stellar interiors are like furnaces, where elements are synthesized or combined or fused together. Most stars, such as the Sun, belong to the so-called main sequence stars. In the course of such stars, hydrogen atoms are fused through thermonuclear reactions to make helium atoms. Also take note that massive main sequence stars burn up their hydrogen faster than the smaller stars. Stars like our sun burn out hydrogen in about 10 billion years. So what happens to the remaining dust and gas? I think we should have that conversation. The remaining dust and gas may end up as they are or as planets, asteroids, or other bodies. Okay. So we also have this thing called as galaxy. A galaxy is a cluster of billions of stars. And clusters of galaxies form super clusters. Now, in between the clusters is practically an empty space. So this organization of matter in the universe suggests that it is indeed clumpy at a certain scale. But at a large scale, it appears homogeneous and isotropic. Isotropic means that there are no special directions to the universe. Homogeneous means that there are no special places in the universe. Now, based on recent studies, the universe is 13.8 billion years old. The diameter of the universe is probably infinite, but should be at least 91 billion light years. Its density is 4.5 times 10 raised to the 31st power gram per cubic centimeter. Wow. Crazy. Now, in 1929, 
Edwin Hubble announced his significant discovery of the red shift and its interpretation that galaxies are moving away from each other, hence as evidence for an expanding universe. This is predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. He observed that the spectral lines of starlight made to pass through a prism are shifted toward the red part of the electromagnetic spectrum, meaning toward the band of lower frequency. Thus, the inference that the star or galaxy must be moving away from us. So redshift is the evidence for an expanding universe which contradicted the previously held view of static and unchanging universe. I can't do this. This slide shows an image of the cosmic microwave background radiation or CMB. CMB is thought to be leftover radiation from the Big Bang, or the time when the universe began. So its accidental discovery in 1964 by Arno Penzias and Robert Woodrow earned them the Physics Nobel Prize in 1978. So CMB can be observed as a strikingly uniform faint glow in the microwave band coming from all directions. The cosmic microwave background is actually a black body radiation at temperature of 2.725 Kelvin. Now, let's talk about the origin of the universe. There are three theories regarding the origin of the universe. Bye! Let's talk about first the non-scientific thought. Ancient Egyptians believed in many gods and myths which narrate that the world arose from an infinite sea at the first rising of the sun. Now, the Kuba people of Central Africa tell the story of a creator god, Bombo, or Bamba in some books, who alone in a dark and water-covered earth felt an intense stomach pain and then vomited the stars, sun, and moon. In India, there is the narrative that the gods sacrificed Purusha, the primal man, whose head, feet, eyes, and mind became the sky, earth, sun, and moon, respectively. The monotheistic religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam claim that a supreme being created the universe, including man and other living organisms. Now, unlike hypothesis in the sciences, religious beliefs cannot be subjected to tests using the scientific method. For this reason, they cannot be considered valid topic of scientific inquiry. Period. Okay, take note. Now let's talk about the second model, which is the steady state model. The now discredited steady state model of the universe was proposed in 1948 by Bondi and Gold and by Hoyle. In cosmology, the steady state model is an alternative to the Big Bang theory of evolution of the universe. This states that the density of matter remains unchanged because of the continuous creation of matter. In other words, the observable universe essentially remains the same regardless of time or place. This places it in sharp contrast to the theory that the majority of matter was created in a single event and has been expanding ever since. Now, this prediction led to tests and was eventually rejected with the discovery of the cosmic microwave background. Next, let's have the Big Bang Theory. Pray for me. As the currently accepted theory of the origin and evolution of the universe, the Big Bang Theory postulates that 13.8 billion years ago, the universe expanded from a tiny, dense, and hot mass to its present size and much cooler state. So this theory rests on two ideas. The first is the general relativity. It's getting weird. In Einstein's general theory of relativity, 
gravity is thought of as a distortion of space and time and no longer described by a gravitational field in contrast to the law of gravity of Sir Isaac Newton. General relativity explains the peculiarities of the orbit of Mercury and the bending of light by the Sun. This theory has passed rigorous tests. The next idea is the cosmological principle. So this assumes that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. Okay? So again, homogeneous means there are no special places in the universe. It's uniform. Isotropic means there are no special directions to the universe. This is consistent with our current large-scale image of the universe. But keep in mind that it is clumpy at smaller scales. Okay? So the Big Bang Theory has withstood the test for expansion. The first one is the redshift. Number two is the abundance of hydrogen, helium, and lithium. And number three, the uniformly pervasive cosmic microwave background radiation, or simply the remnant heat from the bang. Now, it is important to note that the bang and the big bang should not be taken as an explosion, okay? It is better thought of a simultaneous appearance of space everywhere. So the theory does not identify the cause of the bang, okay? Now let's talk about the evolution of the universe according to the Big Bang Theory. In the beginning, like 13.8 billion years ago, all matter and energy in the universe existed as a hot, dense, tiny state, right? It then underwent extremely rapid exponential inflation, then conditions were achieved which allowed the existence of only quarks, hadrons, and leptons. Then, Big Bang nucleosynthesis took place and produced protons, neutrons, atomic nuclei, and then hydrogen, lithium, helium, until sufficient cooling did not allow further nucleosynthesis. From then on, the cooling universe entered a matter-dominated period when photons decoupled from matter. And here, light could travel freely as still observed today in the form of cosmic microwave background radiation. As the universe continued to cool down, matter collected into clouds, giving rise to only stars after 300,000 years. And eventually, galaxies would form after 100 million years from time zero, during which, through nucleosynthesis in stars, carbon and elements heavier than carbon were produced. From 9.8 billion years until the present, the universe became dark energy dominated and underwent accelerating expansion. At about 9.8 billion years after the Big Bang, the solar system was formed. Period! Oh, I got chills! Now, it is important to note that before, people thought that the gravity would eventually stop the expansion and end the universe with a big crunch, and perhaps to generate another bang. This would occur if the density of the universe is greater than the critical density. But if it is lower, there would be not enough gravitational force to stop or reverse the expansion. So the universe would expand forever leading to the big chill or big freeze since it cools during expansion, okay? So the recent observation of accelerating expansion suggests that the universe will expand exponentially forever. Whoa! Oh, that just gave me chills! Whoa! So that's it for lesson number one. So don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and tag your friends and classmates. See you next time. Bye-bye. I'm out of here.